Good morning. This is Rebecca with ClassicCars.com and I am here with Curtis with Crown Concepts. They are a proud sponsor of our fifth annual Future Collector Car Show that's happening in January 12th. Um, Crown Concepts is, is located here in Tucson, Arizona. And I'm really excited to be here with you today and he's going to give us a show around of some of the key vehicles that they have currently and a, a little history about Crown Concepts. Well, Rebecca, it's great to have you. Uh, you know, we're excited to have you. Welcome you to Crown Concepts. Uh, you know, at Crown, we, we're happy and love what we do in the car community, trying to bring it to Tucson in the Southwest at a new level uh, and provide, you know, what uh, really car enthusiasts at all levels, all types of vehicles, a uh, place to call home to have anything they need done and just make sure they feel confident and comfortable with what that service is, no matter track to classic car show, you name it. You know, we, we like to do it all. But welcome to Crown. Happy to have you today. It's been Appreciate a pleasure. It. Yeah, that's one one really key feature that I thought was unique about your your business structure is that it's welcoming for for any make and model. And we and you'll see that in a second here. We've got a little bit of everything here, um, as well as their services. They they offer quite a wide range of services, but with some very expertise um, uh, staffing here. Uh, I got to learn about their staff here and it's pretty fantastic. So we're gonna walk through and see a couple of the key vehicles that you are bringing to auction, correct? Sounds, sounds good, yeah, no, and uh, and you're right. We're not uh, genre specific to something. Uh, we're really, you know, we love all cars and it's what's neat about the team that we've assembled at Crown. Uh, everybody kind of has a unique passion of themselves, you know, and we really try to foster all of that uh, because it's really just that passion for, you know, performance, automobiles of the classics all of it that we're fans of you know it's it's and we're really trying to make sure the next generation car enthusiasts and kids enjoy it as well we're trying to find and make sure we entertain to them right they're the ones that are going to be around uh, you know for the next show so uh, we want to keep everybody engaged and have fun and, and love it but uh, certainly the team and it's been tricky in Tucson to assemble uh, with you know the talented team we need from uh, all levels of the performance vehicle uh, but have done a great job to do that uh, and with Archie Apostle our pro tuner uh, we do a lot of pro tuning services now uh, you know of all vehicles new and old uh, especially with a lot of induction systems from pro chargers uh, superchargers and just tur uh, turbos themselves so you know a lot of neat, neat applications we're working on. Fantastic. And we'll definitely get a little more in depth and give you a visual um, show around of these uh, services that they have available here, um, including the tuning and, and some of the custom fabri fabrication I've seen as Correct. well. Um, so, but we're first off, we're going to go check out a couple cars that they're actually going to take to the Barrett Jackson auction. Is that correct? Yeah, sounds good. So, yeah, awesome. So, at least. Uh, Initially, this Shelby GT is a 2007 uh, factory original car with uh, as original uh, exterior and interior. It's a low mileage car, which is what makes it so uh, rare now for a collector, somebody who's trying to bring uh, all of Shelby's you know, lineup together. This car has 31 original miles on it. Uh, it's just been meticulously maintained. We got it at Crown about a year ago and since have just uh, done the same kind of maintenance and taking care of it. It will be going to auction at uh, Barrett Jackson Scottsdale 2020. So we're excited to make it available for uh, any of those uh, Shelby GT Mustang, uh, you know, collectors out there. But uh, certainly a, a rare piece, uh, a great conditioned car, extremely low miles, a window ticker or window sticker, all the original paperwork's available with the car. Uh, so certainly a neat, neat car to have, you know, an option Definitely. to get. As considered, I mean, this is a pristine example of what a collector car is in, in, in the modern age. Um, and you said how many miles again? 31 original miles. 31 it's, original miles. It's amazing miles. to find such a low mileage. The original uh, owner got the car and it really, outside of taking delivery of it, parked it in his garage and then just enjoyed going outside, you know, looking at it, waxing it, and then starting it. And, um, you know, that was it. It just, it's really been That's well maintained. The yeah. Collector. So it's, it's there. I don't even think you could buy you, you, a brand new vehicle with, <laughs> with less, less miles. Than, yeah, with less than 31 anymore. I That's mean, it fantastic. just seems like they have that coming off the showroom. Yeah. So neat, neat opportunity for anybody out there. Perfect. And we also have a, some custom builds here too. So. Correct. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, at Crown, uh, quite a few things. And as we walk down, uh, certainly this 2000, uh, 15 STI, uh, you know, it's just part of our, uh, I wish the engine or the hood was open, but it's not, but uh, shows off, you know, a factory, you know, looking STI car, beautiful car, uh, but it's making over 900 horsepower 900. with just, uh, you know, a very stock looking engine that's been built by Crown, tuned by uh, Archie and, and makes great power. But uh, the, the gentleman that owns it takes it to half mile events and quarter mile wow. events and, and actually uses it to go get groceries still. So that's so what's, the, we went what's from so a neat Shelby about it. to a Subaru yeah. and now we see as we, a as Trans Am. We, 
Yeah, neat, neat Trans Am, which that's actually a, a development car for Trans Am, so it's also kind of a unique deal. It's a, um, it was a pre-production car that the Pontiac GM team used for development purposes, and now uh, the, the owner that has it now, it, uh, you know, it was considered like a dollar car at the time, you know, it, it, and has since been repainted, and uh, some new seats were put in it at the time because of what it was used for for development purposes, but I think still relatively low miles for a, you know, a car that was used for development, and uh, you know, neat, neat opportunity. But the other one that we'll be featuring at Barrett-Jackson this year will be this 37 Ford Resto Mod pickup, and so it's a small block Ford, uh, custom uh, it's a steel cab and nose it's a, a gl glass bed on the truck uh, but completely in it it's not uh, a truck that crown built so this is a, a truck featured and built by another shop out of texas originally uh, crown just had the opportunity to get it and go back through it make sure things have been since the restoration or the, the resto mod build originally uh, just everything been tidied up again and ready for the next owner but certainly a lot of dollars in this truck uh, it's everything's been touched on it underside top side it's neat to see underside photos of it uh, which are available on the crown website um, but just truly a neat piece for somebody to enjoy and drive and you can you know with uh, shows or cruises you name it you know a very nice uh, truck for that purpose but entirely you know different look than uh, the, our Cobra lineup or certainly the uh, like the GT um, and speaking of the the website it is linked in the description of this live video so check that out um, crownconceptsusa.com um, but also talking about the Superformance line you guys are a certified um, dealer, but you also build them here, correct? Correct. Yeah, we're actually a Superformance dealer, and let's see here. I want to get caught up in. The... <laughs> and so we have uh, all of the Superformance product line available to our our customers from the, uh, the the Mark III Cobras, which is what we have quite a few line up here. It just becomes a you know a very popular car in the Southwest, but uh, comes from the original. These are a light Carroll Shelby licensed product, so the the original Shelby you know Mustangs uh, that AC Cobra built. Uh, you can get similar ones. This is Superformance's uh, you know a version of it, which has been upgraded suspension and brakes. Uh, they're still manufactured in South Africa, come across to the U.S., uh, and that's what uh, these. We don't call a kit car, we call them a continuation build. So they're truly oh, gotcha. a license. They come, they're a factory assembled car, which makes their quality, their form, fit, function, everything about them just be top notch uh, versus a car that truly is uh, can considered a kit car that somebody can build in their garage. So these cars uh, are from the factory this way, very, very great finish. You can see this one that has the hood open, it's without engine and transmission. That's how we receive them from the factory, which is then what we finish for the customer to their custom spec, you know, expectations. We like the modern, uh, you know, five liter Coyotes yeah, with, with an eight stack or uh, you know supercharged, but we'll do a lot of 427 you know Roush engines as well as uh, you know 460s as well. Kind of a unique build for these Superformance Cobras. Uh, extremely fun cars to drive and enjoy. Get a lot of looks no matter where you're at with them. We have multiple colors here to, to offer. Uh, we have one Roadster edition which does not have the side pipes. That's the traditional Cobra, so it's kind of a neat uh, neat car here to look at with the interior. Uh, it's been changed out for a brown interior, but you'll notice there's no cutouts on the side for side pipes, so these have an under exhaust, which makes the car fun because almost inevitably anybody with a Cobra is going to get bit on their calf with a burn from the uh, side pipes. I definitely had that happen to me once. Yeah, and so, you know, it's like after it happens to you, then you start looking at the Roadster and say like, you know what, I like that, you know, it's starting to grow on me in terms of its look with not having the exposed pipes. And this is one of them where the exhaust is on the underside, uh, still has all the same, you know, handling capabilities and driving performance and a lot of fun to enjoy at shows and stuff and gets, you know, many same looks. But just mi minor different features like on the Roadster doesn't have the hood scoop um, that the Mark III Cobras will and then side pipes you don't see. So just some subtle differences. They run the uh, front, you know, considered bumper with uh, bumperettes versus oh, yeah. the quick, quick lifts on the front and rear. So just a slightly different look, but, you know, it... Uh, uh, for those that want that. Yeah, yeah, I almost feel this has more of a track feel. This is more of a Yeah, a cruise. cruise. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's kind of, I would say, what uh, you know, what their genre would, would apply to. I but definitely like the Coyote Smoke one. It's yeah, pretty impressive. Yeah, we should impressive. open the hood yeah, on that one. Yeah, we should check one. that out. I'm that, very uh, impressed. Because that's really, you know, something Crown and the uh, team at Crown enjoys doing, which is, you know, like like bringing the old school to new school theme. So this is a Mark III Superformance Cobra, but we've, we've put the modern flair on it. Put the modern flare with a 5 liter uh, Roush built Coyote, uh, 8 stack individual throttle body injection. 
and then you know just trimmed the vehicle out with a black instead of any uh, polished stainless or chrome look so it's a blacked out theme the black on uh, uh, gray which it's a Ferrari gray uh, color and so you know, it's just kind of a neat, you know, we, we did the diamond stitched interior and in the trunk, just again, little touches. It's got a carbon uh, digital ga uh, dash gauges in it. So, oh, yeah. you know, just I actually a lot had of things to highlight. Of uh, driving one of these with the Coyote Swap, and man, is it a thrill. Um, Good. The no. suspension and handling, like you said, was up, up, upgraded, updated. But with the Coyote in it, that low end torque was just, it was super enjoyable. A lot, a lot of fun. Even just for high speed um, uh, freeway cruising, driving. it was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, now it, uh, this really is a good blend. It's one thing when you do a 427 uh, Roush, uh, even carbureted or injected in one, uh, those V8 motors have so much low lowering torque, you know, not spinning the tires is difficult. Mm -hmm. With the Coyote, you know, the power band and torque curve on it kind of allows for, you know, a, a different drive, right? In which case you're not, because it's, it's more of a high RPM motor in terms of, you know, so you can get off the line without always just spinning the tires unintentionally. Gotcha. Almost keeps people, you know, in, in, out of trouble a little bit, That's you know, true. With, with the Coyote. I definitely felt like I was being, it was more handled. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, not, I not think a it's a neat option. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's the power is there if you want it, you know, and on the low end, you don't have to be so afraid of it being Wonderful. there unintentionally. Well, yeah. let's uh, let's do a tour. Um, but before we do that, Sounds I want to look at this awesome mural you have here just to highlight. They are located in Tucson, um, yeah. which is actually really not that far from Phoenix. We just drove from Phoenix and it's only about an hour. So, OK, good. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> north side of Tucson, so we're, we're not too far from the yep. Chandler. Jared's uh, favorites. Phoenix areas. <laughs> Jared's manning the camera today and he's doing a great job. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. So yeah, let's take a look and see um, some of the, uh, I guess, shop uh, features yeah. of uh, your services. A as we walk kind of this way, this is just to highlight what would be the showroom for Crown that has the cars that we own for sale, uh, customer cars that we uh, take care of and manage for customers, a true concierge service to take care of cars for customers, make sure they're available for, uh, you know, car shows, track days, you name it. And then, uh, you know, from here, you can at least see the upstairs hospitality well, which is an area that, uh, you know, we use for small car events. Uh, car clubs will use that space to have meetings. Uh, small businesses will use it for, uh, you know, parties and different things. But so it's a, it's a fun area. Certainly it provides a nice uh, overlooking area to the car, the, the showroom. And the other kind of cars that will be in this area at times are just, uh, you know, customer cars that are in for performance work. And so we, we do quite a bit of it. And as we continue to walk through the rest of the shop, then it'll highlight the capabilities at Crown where we do, you know, a lot of builds of all types, full restoration, resto mod, and just performance upgrade work at all levels. But uh, those cars and those customer cars that are in at Crown prior to or post work will, you know, live in the showroom just taking care of customers' cars to make sure they're always well-maintained. Now, before we go into yeah. the description of your um, your services here, I just want to note that we went from the showroom to the shop space, and it's equally as clean and organized. It's, it's Thank you. It's shocking. I, we, I, I appreciate it. No, and we work hard. You know, the team, we, there is no uh, janitorial service that we hire to keep Crown this way. It's a part of our culture and our employee, you know, uh, that we require just because it's, it, you know, cars with, or customers with expensive cars and, and the, it's a passion and a thing of love, right? And so when somebody cares that much about what they have, they've got to feel, and we want them to feel comfortable and safe with what they're leaving us to take care of for them. Definitely. And, you know, we, uh, you know, the, the, myself and the other two owners uh, at Crown, when we started it, it was always about the highest level uh, and the intention so that our customers, you know, when they came here felt this is the place. And, you know, some of it uh, reminds people of a performance almost like race garage from a, uh, an Indy car or NASCAR, you know, level uh, look. And that is our background. I mean, Joey, the uh, part, one of the partners, you know, spent years in Indy cars, uh, top fuel dragsters and, um, and, you know, lived and raced to that world. And where we came from in our performance past, that's where it really our roots started from, was just performance cars from racetrack perspective. And we're, when we decided it's time to do this after trying to restore some, and build some cars ourselves in the mm -hmm. area, and realized it's, it shouldn't be this difficult to find good help that you, you know, you're not afraid to leave the car with to get the work done, that uh, Crown you know, really evolved, that we said it's time to do it, and, uh, and do it for all levels. And you can see quite a few track cars here because we do take care of a lot of uh, IMR, the Indy Motorsport Ranch in Wilcox, as well as the new Apex track up in Maricopa, members for both facil facilities. And uh, you know, it becomes, that's part of the, the thing we really enjoy just because it gets back to our roots of racing and performance cars. But uh, the shop cleanliness 
is all a part of that. You know, if one in our techs, you know, appreciate it. I, I think right. any tech that would come to this and see it as an opportunity to work realizes we just make sure they understand this is part of your daily culture and it has to stay that way. You know, it started clean, it should stay clean. Definitely. Uh, you know, certainly there's plenty of jobs we do that make a mess. It's just staying on top of that to clean that up as that job finishes and not let it carry over. You know, and um, and it, it's just that way. It's just what we do. Yeah, and, and honestly, as even the, uh, you know, m my car is, is a Subaru. It's not, you know, a, Ma a Maserati or anything uh -huh. like that. Right. But I definitely feel more confidence walking in here and thinking this is a place I would want to bring my car, Good. even if it's next to a Maserati or yeah. a fully built, uh, built Subaru over here, which we can definitely yeah, talk let, about. Yeah, let's hit it real quick. <laughs> this is a development car for Crown Concepts. So with uh, Archie Apostar Pro Tuner, uh, it's built a lot of power in the Subaru platform over the years in, in the Southwest, and, and it's something that he has an expertise in. So we've brought a little bit of engineering and other uh, disciplines to Archie's background. Let me just open the, the hood on this. Um, to show the 2.5 liter Subaru that we've uh, assembled for this track car. And we use it as a development platform to build power with the core uh, engine itself, as well as induction system around it. So with an air to uh, you know, liquid intercooler, a large turbo, um, and, and not all crown developed parts, but things that we are looking to just like Process West makes a lot of you know, great components that we use currently. And we're just trying to use them to continue to develop things internally and work with them as well. Uh, to help build power, you know, for, for everybody out there. But Definitely. Um, and this car will be this featured. This is impressive because I, I, I own a Subaru and it never looks this clean from factory. So, <laughs> Thank you. and the amount of, it's so tidy. It's impressive. That's Thank impressive. you. Yeah, no, and, that, and that's part of the importance for our, our you know, techniical team, the, the techs themselves, making an engine bay look this way. They take a lot of pride in with, you know, custom parts that we need to fab for air oil separation uh, when it, you know, it pushes this much. Uh, those pieces have to be made. We want them to make them look when somebody looks at it, almost not know it's not stock. You know, yeah, like well, that could be, factory, yeah, yeah, that could be like a factory. Even though those that would see it be like, there's nothing stock about it. It's completely aftermarket, but yet mm -hmm. they keep that appearance. You know, it's important for us to make sure Absolutely. we kind of blend it. So, but it's uh, you know we so we we use this for all kinds of development purposes from uh, data acquisition and suspension, uh, the driveline components, the digital dash. Uh, around all the engine parameters, trying to monitor uh, exhaust temps and intake temps and things to just truly, you know, continue to refine and build power. Gotcha. Um, and what you mentioned before, it being so close to um, two tracks or three, technically, because there's yeah, Muscleman mu as well. Muscleman's out here, and and uh, Wild Horse, you know, has uh, tracks of multiple shapes, and That's so, right. so there's yeah, there's really a lot in the area, and we're fortunate to be, you know, kind of in the center of a lot of it and, and able to participate. Is this, the, um, is this an engine lift? Huh? Is this an it's, engine lift? It, it, yeah, it is. It uh, becomes a lift. So when, you know, at Crown, just like everything we do, we try to decide and, and look at what equipment we need to help facilitate all that, you know, projects we work on. So this, we manufactured the lift, this overhead gantry ourselves to basically accommodate all our needs. So you'll notice it actually goes around the outside of our lifts in the building. Uh, it, you know, trucks can back underneath it. It's sized so we can roll through all of our overhead doors so that we can move it within wow. the facility. Every time we went to look at one that was already manufactured by somebody else, it was, you know, it, it would meet like two of the three criteria, or mm -hmm. but not all. So we just decided. Well, so I like that attitude. If, if it isn't already built, we'll just build it ourselves. We'll build it. Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> we, you know, so you can see the crown, uh, you know, branded yeah, components see, on it yeah. that give you the uh, overhead gantry and, um, you know, different so features and so like that. Machinery wise. What do you have in-house? Do you have a CNC machine, a lathe, all that good stuff? Correct, yeah. So just wow. closing off this area, and just because I wanted to highlight, this doesn't always look like this, but we yeah. are just in the finishing stages of a restoration, um, and these components laid out belong to a 1964 uh, Ford Country sedan station wagon. And so it's, uh, it will deliver later this month to the family. The family's been in Tucson for years. They started, uh, they, they were a big business in the area. And th this wagon the family used to go to and from uh, family vacations in Mexico oh and gosh. California. So it's passed, it's been passed down and, and the daughter now said like, you know, she just wants to remember all those history, this, all the stuff they did as a family in it mm -hmm. and, and then give it to the next generation. So she, they, they approached us and uh, we're restoring it now for them, a uh, full frame off restoration. But uh, and and it will this be available on on our too. blog, yeah, on our, our website and stuff to share. And our newsletter should be coming out with you know a lot more photos of it. I think it's going out now, but it will finish later this month. We'll have a reveal for the family, and these things just get laid out so that we can get ready to start. You know, just the final trim pieces and assembly of components as this comes together. That's amazing. Um, so we're going but, from fully track built Subaru. 
to a custom restoration here. And it's an OEM build. It looks Beautiful. like it rolled off the assembly line. I think outside of some different wheels they put on it, but it's not like a resto mod build. It is mm -hmm. truly a you know an original. Uh, looking station wagon for the family. That's and, amazing. And the, yeah, the kids. So that's will, what the story is about, right? It's all exactly. about getting to that next generation. Yeah. So, so then just going back to the equipment and the custom stuff, as we walk back into the factory, then we just keep getting further into what would be our fabrication and assembly areas. So, you know, if we look to our left, we have uh, a powder coat and ceramic room. So it's where we do um, a lot of, you know, a lot of brake calipers, wheels, suspension components, engine bay parts. Uh, anything we can fit in the oven back there will be parts that we'll, you know, we'll do powder coating on for that cosmetic finish, good protection, or ceramic coating on a lot of exhaust and, and kit again, components. And again, still impeccably clean. Thank you. It's fantastic. So, so it's, um, this is like quality control to an extreme. Yeah, this you know, I, it's, it's part <laughs> of our background as well. So as uh, my background came from a lot of years in uh, aerospace and medical, uh, I was involved with the uh, manu manufacturing of the artificial heart. So for six wow. years, I worked with an engineering team to develop uh, a drive equipment, which was a pneumatically uh, powered artificial heart that was truly implanted. And so, you know, uh, process control and quality control, you know, we implement SOPs around here at Crown to do everything we do just mm -hmm. to try to make sure that uh, not only are we have good teammates, but we're process oriented in how we do everything. So you know, what's just a, a uh, SOP? A standard operating procedure. Wonderful. So we, we use it for, you know, how we work through uh, the service on any car in terms of performance or non-performance in mm -hmm. terms of routine maintenance to, you know, custom applications like our powder coating process or uh, ceramic coating, That's you amazing. know, and it's just, it is to try to make sure everything we do, we do the same every time. And if we find a way to make it better, we implement that. So it's better the next time for everybody, you know, not just gotcha. hit and miss. Uh, this is the dirty room. We call it a the dirty room. <laughs> it's cleaner than my room. <laughs> metal, metal preparation. It's uh, sandblasting, sawing, grinding, uh, everything we kind of do to get things ready for you know next application before we move into a, a tube bending or welding process. So you even have things but set up as far as uh, I guess process flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as much as we can, we try to uh, like that in terms of things that will be close together. Right. Um, you know, just so this is a couple more of our performance base areas that you know we, we do all kinds of extreme build in terms of uh, power and. Uh, you know, brakes, suspensions, you know, you, exhaust systems, you name it. Uh, the reason these two bays are back here is because they are close to our all-wheel drive chassis dyno room, so oh. we might as well hit it next before we go back, but this door will lead into that. And so these two generally back here is where we're developing or working on stuff that will be, you know, tuned, in which case, let me just get this opened up for us and uh, let me step over here, come on in. And so here we have an S2000 on the chassis dyno now, something that uh, we've been working on. Uh, it's got a big, big turbocharger on it, uh, intercooler system. Uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna make for power with this car, but uh, certainly it's a Mustang all wheel drive chassis dyno. Uh, we've uh, had it for the last uh, three years and the room was really built for it in terms of ventilation. So we have fresh air uh, coming in. We have an exhaust extraction system. Many times, uh, so we can dyno cars, doors down if it's bad weather. Tucson, we don't have too many days of bad weather. So, you know, <laughs> most cases we can have the uh, bay door up and we can be dynoing cars, um, you know, with that. But And again, uh, everything has its place. It's in its place. That's yes, fantastic. very, you know, and, uh, and then sometimes just because a lot of cars which do build big power, we have to have extra cooling. So besides the uh, air that comes in from the roof, we augment it with additional fans, make sure that everything can get what it needs appropriately. This is definitely but, an enthusiast's Thank uh, you. Yeah, dream. it's you know it's kind of like <laughs> it is it is kind of like an automotive. You know, it's hard to you can't complain about coming to work every day, that's for sure. Right. When definitely. You, when you love cars and love things about cars. But as we so so these bays, the dyno room, then what we'd leave in work into is the fabrication area where we really have the capability to do, you know, what we need. To our left first, though, is just the machine shop area. It is where we have a CNC uh, four-axis machine, uh, conventional mill and lathe that we can do just about anything we need to. Crown has, a, has a, you know, in the future is looking to manufacture more custom components that will be a Crown product line. So, you know, the equipment we had the capability to get early in the uh, startup of the, of the company, and so we acquired it and uh, have the area dedicated. Right now, it's primarily just used for the modification of custom components for any given build that we're working on. 
but you know, hopefully tomorrow at some point, uh, you know, components that we've you know designed or manufactured for a project just become available to market, so that you know other people would have the opportunity to source the part themselves and, and assemble it in their build. You know, but uh, so that's what we've got the equipment for, and look forward to doing more of that as we continue forward. Gotcha. So but, some of these custom parts could potentially be available on your website. Correct. Yeah, we're we're looking to launch in 2020 uh, a, a e-commerce site that would contain components that we manufacture and design, as well as stuff that we just distribute for other you know great manufacturers. Uh, but this leads into then the fabrication area with sheet metal capabilities so that we can take on and do just about anything we need to uh, from a body perspective or custom you know, modification to something in there. Uh, for plasma cam capabilities to cut and modify parts that we need, all of our welding equipment, uh, TIG, MIG, so that we can uh, do all the stainless and steel, you, know, you, you name it, aluminum alloys. Uh, our welder, I think, has maybe got 12 certifications of, uh, of different levels to do, you know, everything that we do for the welding on, on vehicles. That's impressive. Um, but, yeah, so this is kind of what this area gets dedicated towards. A little storage area upstairs of just, you know, parts that we work on and need space for. Yeah, the flow of manufacturing, if you will, or production, uh -huh. is, is very well thought well, thank out. Thank you. Because you can see, you know, if I'm working on this vehicle and I'm test fitting some custom pipe work I'm doing, but I'm fabricating it in there, the back and forth is, is this right it's, there. It's close, yeah. So. Now everything we have, I think, laid out, and it's, you know, when we got the building and acquired it and had the opportunity, it was, uh, for the most part, a vacant warehouse. It, it was used for RC track cars. So it's funny because it's still cars in this building, but it lived it's, its life. <laughs> yeah, it lived its life for RC tracks for, for a long time. It just grew up. All right, um, well, let's uh, take a look at the... Yeah. Uh, the office area and the lobby, probably the, the less interesting part, right? Yeah, but. you know, but I mean, the lobby's got, uh, you know, some amazing cars in it and really does it highlight our, our roots and passion with, uh, with race cars. But certainly as we walk and we run upstairs, upstairs is where we have uh, the offices we work out of for multiple stuff, uh, all of our graphic and uh, IT, uh, website development, social media, you know, activities take place from the upstairs offices, just a little team break room. Oh, nice. Be able to, uh, you know, eat and lunch and different, you know, Step what they away. need to do. But yeah, <laughs> as we head upstairs then. But so, so in, in the building when we acquired it, we did add the mezzanine. So we added the second floor okay. uh, to have the office space and a, a conference room for our own internal meetings, as well as, uh, you know, when we rent space for uh, groups, then they have that ability as well. But you know, just some cubicle space and some, you know, our offices I work out of, that's, that's my office there. and Joey in the corner. So when was Crown Concepts established here? Uh, 2016. Uh, the, we, we started the business late 15 and then actually got into the building in 16 and uh, finished the improvements on the building, I, I want to say in like July and August okay. 1st was what we considered day one when we opened the door. That's fantastic. So it's, uh, yeah, it's come a long way in a relatively short period of time. So um, you host uh, events here and people can also uh, like you said, rent out this venue? Yeah, yeah, and so we made it available for um, car organizations and non, you know, we actually have quite a few corporations from the Tucson area where they'll bring their teammates, uh, management teams in and have, uh, you, know, bo you know, a group or team building and things and different uh, events here. But, uh, you know, a little bar space, uh, some tables and chairs that uh, every customer and, you know, we almost call them a partner of Crown, uh, is welcome to come hang out you know, while they're waiting for their car to be worked on or anytime. You know, it's, it really is a destination place for uh, anybody that, you know, is, is with Crown and want them to feel at home and feel comfortable. And um, so they're welcome to come upstairs, have some drinks, watch TV, um, you know, whatever, whatever they need. But this space is, is used for that. Yeah. And it's well executed, honestly, that every, you. you can, as you walk through, you can definitely feel the thought that got put into it every aspect versus you know where things were placed or how they were placed and the overall design like you said it very, very much feels like a performance shop and then you have this luxury feel over here that just translates right into it it's very exciting <laughs> thank you yeah and then i mean if we go forward into like the lobby area which you know we almost did it completely backwards in terms of how you know most people would walk into crown but it does highlight for us you know uh, part of our past and an original nice uh, drive passions. Yeah, that's actually, so the last time we ran our track car, uh, 
the motor and engine you know delivered all the power it needed to but the rest of the driveline couldn't handle it, Got it. so uh, the lower input shaft to the rear differential and the drive shaft separated on us uh, we still finished the pass with the front wheel drive portion of it so we oh were able gosh. to get a time in the books which actually was still a pretty good time but uh, we've now uh, rebuilt and, and improved all those sections so we look forward to getting it back out to the track soon uh, so watch for that watch for uh, crowns ts1 and hopefully good times that we can lay down definitely so There's some artwork up here as well that's featured. Yeah, yeah, some local artists uh, in the area bring stuff by all the time to share and show. And, you know, we make it available at some levels just to, you know, get it available to the, that local market. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it uh, helps us with some, some wall art. And, and we want to, you know, just like all aspects of the automotive car community, we want to be a part of and share. So if that's our way to help the art, you know, uh, portion of it, then great, you know, and, and we try to try to do that. But so getting back to part of, you know, when Crown started and our, and our roots as uh, friends when we were young and racing, that's where my, my past was in racing. And we all met uh, uh, through school and then racetrack events. But this uh, this was the last car that A.J. Watson built, who, uh, you know, won Indy 500 for many years and this in the late 50s, early 60s. And all of these cars are from that era. And this, these two cars manufactured and, and driven by a gentleman named Hank Arnold, who was from Tucson, and he just, you know, uh, demonstrated at the highest level true sportsmanship and, and a level of fabrication that was next to none. I mean, and so as a child for myself growing up, that's who, you know, I, I learned about and aspired to be. Uh, we all, uh, Joey and, and Ryan, we, we worked together, and uh, Joey was off in motorsports, uh, you know, racing at, at Indianapolis 500, and so it was always my dream to be there. Well, never made it directly, but certainly our way now of being involved, and, and we look to have this car uh, finished and make laps around the Indianapolis uh, Motor Speedway, hopefully in the coming year, and then that car will also probably be available, you know, to a collector, somebody looking to add, you know, a piece of true history to their collection that, um, you know, not many, there's just not, you know, there's only so many of them that were built and so right. many that are still around, especially in a driving condition. So we have the right off the engine to put in the car, we'll get it finished and, and have it available. That's but, amazing. So but, we have a little bit of everything here, including some racing history. Yeah. That's and great. It, actually, my first, my first race car over there underneath the uh, stairwell. So. That's awesome. So this morning at the, at the uh, Cars and Coffee and Clubs event, we had a, a modern day quarter midget uh, that was out there. And this was my first quarter midget when I was five. So making laps around the, around the house in the dirt. And then uh, we actually took it back out to the track here a couple years ago. And one of the young kids made laps in it. Uh, just really? to just to you know have fun and and uh, it was really neat so it was fun to see it go around That's the track awesome. again but I think it's something new to have that is an amazing yeah. piece of your history to have so um, it's so it's fun but yeah. but yeah I mean that's that's crown our sales offices the, the everybody that meets and greets anybody that comes into crown you know we, we love everybody's welcome doesn't you know matter to take a look to to see share a story you know it's it's that's what it's all about. So we, we you enjoy it. You definitely get that feeling. Um, this morning, they uh, host a cars and coffee and clubs every right. first Saturday of the month from 6 to eight, um, 9 a.m. It's literally across the street. street. It's a fantastic idea at Top Golf in Tucson, Arizona. Um, so thank you very much for taking the time to show us the facility. There is a lot to talk about, so I hope you will stay through this entire video. If not, there will be bullet points soon. Cool. Um, we're also looking forward to seeing what you guys bring out for the Future Collector Car Show on January 12th. Crown Concepts will be there, um, and as well as Barrett Jackson Auction. You can take a look at that Shelby um, and also that custom truck that we saw out there. Um, and yeah, do you have any, uh, anything I, you want to? I just want to say, Rebecca, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. We're excited about the future classic car show. Uh, you know, what cars we'll highlight or take out there and share. But, you know, everything we saw from the previous years, it's a great event. Uh, so we're excited to go see what others bring out. And hopefully we can bring something that uh, sparks interest or, you know, uh, you know, passion for others as well. But awesome. I appreciate it. So thank you very thank much. You. Yeah, thank you. And stay tuned for updates on what they're going to bring out. We're definitely going to shoot out some teasers and uh we'll see them then yeah no watch uh www.crownconcepts you know dot com to uh see what we're working on you know Perfect. actually crownconceptsusa.com so uh it's tagged yeah, in the description so check it out there um, their uh, facebook account is also tagged in that description as well so make sure to follow like us. follow yeah. all that good stuff and we'll see you soon